Next guest is Daryl Mitchell. Now, Daryl is a hale old boy who, if we fast forward, has also played test cricket for New Zealand and, and T20 cricket for New Zealand. We're going to have a chat to him, learn about his story, um, his time at Hale. Uh, joining me here is, again, Chris Gard uh, and also Matthew Sculthorpe, our first 11 captain. So welcome, Daryl. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Appreciate your time. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. No worries. So I'm going to hand over to Matt, who's going to start with a few questions about your time at Hale, and we'll just work through your career a little bit from there. Hi, uh, Daryl. Uh, growing up, you went to Hale. Can you tell us a bit about the sports you played as a teenager, both in the community and also for Hale? Um, yeah, so I was lucky enough, uh, obviously born in New Zealand, but moved over to Perth uh, when I was year 10 at school. Um, and yeah, I remember driving through the gates at Hale and seeing 16 grass cricket nets or whatever it was in the first 11 over and I thought, yeah, this is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, growing up, playing rugby and cricket uh, at Hale, um, lucky enough to, yeah, play in the first 15 and the first 11 and uh, play for Scarborough Cricket Club um, once I finished schooling uh, at Hale for a couple of years as well. Um, So, yeah, uh, sport, uh, I love it. I lived and breathed it. It it was uh, one of the main reasons I went to school was to play a sport and have lunch. So, um, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, house sport at Hale was obviously pretty big. Uh, what house were you in and what memories do you have of playing house sport? Um, yeah, I was in Riley. Uh, so we, uh, we had a decent uh, sporting year my year at Riley. So we, we did all right in the old touch uh, touch rugby. Um, cricket, the the boarders always seem to win those comps. My best mate, he was, um, I think he was in Faulkner from memory, but uh, he... He lives six hours. He lives in Albany, and he always used to rub it in that they beat me every time in house cricket. So that used to really grind my gears. But um, yeah, I always enjoyed actually being a rugby boy in the winter, playing AFL for house sport and getting to tackle the AFL boys because uh, they didn't really like the contact. So I quite enjoyed that. Lane for Hale in the PSA competition. Uh, what would be the best sporting win you're involved in, and why do you think you still remember it to this day? Um. Yeah, I guess I, I can't can't really point out one game. I know that playing the Darlow Cup is, uh, looking back now, especially is something that's very special. Um, I think around the world, I don't reckon there would be a stronger first eleven uh, comp going around. Uh, that uh, have the chance to play two day cricket on a Friday and Saturday against um, some some pretty quality schools is is something that I think, looking back now, has, has played a massive role in me being able to achieve what I have achieved so far. Um, and playing with playing cricket with your best mates, um, I still keep in touch with all the guys from my first 11. Um, yeah, I think, you know, growing up, uh, Marcus Stornis was my first 11 captain when he, he was year 12, I was year 10. I uh, had Dane Harapiti, the Wallaby as well. Uh, so, yeah, I was pretty lucky to have played cricket at, at, with those guys and... Um, yeah, I think the Dale Cup is something that, uh, looking back, is is a very very special competition. Yeah, you know, mate, Chris, um, Chris here. Um, I'm, I'm an old Hale boy myself, so I've got an opinion to this question too, but I'll keep that for another day. Um, who was your favourite <laughs> Hale teacher, or uh, who had the greatest influence on you while you were at Hale? Um, yeah, I was trying to th- I was trying to think. School wise, probably I, I quite enjoyed Mr. Tung the old uh, boarding house master. Yeah. I had him in maths. He was a second 15 rugby coach and there was a couple of times he actually let me sneak out and go practice my goal kicking. So um, I always, I think he was always definitely my favourite. Um, but a greatest influence, um, uh, if I'm going to be honest, is probably probably my mates that, uh, that I made from the time at the school. Um, they sort of, we grew up together in that first 11 and, and the way we, even though we came, I think my three years Dalai Cup came last, second and second, um, the individuals that we had within the group were actually quite talented sportsmen and it was quite cool to be able to grow up with them on that journey, if that makes sense. Yep. But um, I'd say my mates are probably my greatest influence. Yeah, nice. Um, you left Hale about 10 years ago and you now obviously play test cricket for New Zealand. Um, can you fill us in on that path that you sort of took over that 10 year period? What did that look like? Yeah, um, yeah, 10 years, jeez, it's gone pretty quick. Uh, yeah, so I'm obviously finishing school. Um, I played two years of first grade for Scarborough, uh, lucky enough to win a couple of premierships. Um, we had a pretty good team at that stage. I got a chance to play with Justin Langer, um, 
Theo Diropoulos, who's another Hale great, uh, Stoinis, AJ Ty. So we had a pretty strong team. And um, I probably didn't see myself making WA in the near future. Um, and talking with I, my, my mentor all through high school and, and club stuff was a Noddy Holder. And so talking with him, we decided, you know, that my, my dream is to play for New Zealand, where I'm from. Um, and so I sort of took a, a punt and, and went and played in an under-23 tournament over here as a 19-year-old um, to try and sort of trial for a contract. And I was lucky enough to, to score a few runs and, and get a contract for that next year. Um, and then, yeah, so pretty much packed up and, and moved in with my grandparents for the first year and... Um, yeah, I guess the rest is sort of history. But I, yeah, played first class cricket for Northern Districts, and um, yeah, a fair while later, I finally got the chance to wear the silver fern. Yeah, so just picking up on Daryl, just his time in New Zealand now. Actually, just walked in. We've got our vice captain of cricket, James Verco, who's who's uh, joining us now as well. And you know, James won't want me saying, but to add background for you, so during the Christmas holidays, he made his A-grade debut for Scarborough. Same club, so oh, he was cool. he had a big oh, smile well. on his face when you were just uh, talking Scarborough stuff then. Um, oh, brilliant. Yeah, but um, so you yeah, made your test debut in November last year. I'm just going to throw over to James to ask you a couple of questions about that, uh, yeah, that time in your life. Can you just uh, tell us the circumstances about how you felt when you found out you were in the 11, what it felt like? And what you did for the ten minutes that followed that? Yeah, yeah. The um, oh, test debut was was pretty surreal, really. Um, I, if I'm going to be honest with you, I probably didn't think I was that close. Um, and we were playing a game for uh, I think it was a one day for Northern Districts against Canterbury down in Christchurch in the South Island. And I literally got I was so you rock up two hours before the game, and you go, I'd go and have a net beforehand, just ten minutes, just to get my eye in and. Um, I got the coach passed me the phone and said, shook my hand. And I thought, what's going on here? And obviously, yeah, you need to fly up. You're playing in the test two days' time. So it was all pretty hectic from there. Um, I had to get back to the hotel, pack my bags, and, and get back home. I was lucky enough that my test debut was in Hamilton, where I live and where all my family's from. So uh, it was pretty special to be able to yeah, have all yeah, my family, my mum and the grandparents, my wife and my daughter all up in the stands. and. Uh, it was pretty cool, but yeah, that, that ten minutes after was it was hell to scout her packing up and pretty much getting on the next flight straight up here and, and then straight into Test cricket. Yeah, right. Who um who was it that presented you with your your Test cap and uh, share any of the things that he said while you he was presenting it to you? Um, yeah, so we in New Zealand we do things a little bit differently. Uh, you get presented your Test cap the night before, so we have a team uh, team presentation where someone comes in and and um, hands you your cap so it happens every test match so every single player gets presented their cap again which is quite special and uh, the last of the making your test debut you're, you're the last one that gets handed out and all the boys stand up and clap you and it's, it's pretty an emotional time really it's, it's pretty cool um, but for me the, the coolest thing was actually probably seeing my granddad that morning uh, before the test uh, being able to see the smile on his face uh, with my test cap was yeah, pretty special um, Chris again, mate. We um, we talk a fair bit at Hale um, about what it takes to be a sort of good team player. Um, do you remember a, a player, either past or present, that um, was a really good team man, and what made that person so special? Yeah, there's, there's obviously there's a few players. There's one my best mate at Hale. Uh, his name was Jeremy Wood. Um, he was a as I said, he's from Albany. He's a, he was a border opening batter. He actually, for me, he epitomised what team player is because. He probably, even here, he wasn't the most talented guy, but he gave absolutely everything for the team. And I think those type of people are crucial in what makes successful teams. So, uh, yeah, he, he's definitely my, my favourite best team man growing through. And then there's a guy, BJ Watling, who's a test keeper now, who um, I think, yeah, if you ask any player within New Zealand, would say he's, he's just an amazing person. Uh, the way he... He sort of gives everything he can for the team, and you, you probably see the passion when he gets to celebrate, when he gets to look at a catch or whatever. Um, yeah, he's the, he's a glue to our team. You know, he's not a superstar, but he, he does his job, and um, yeah, the boys definitely love him for that. Yeah, um, obviously in the current Corona environment, many boys listening might uh, you know be facing a fair few hurdles. Um, clearly, not being involved in sport would be one of them, but you know other things with family with. Uh, you know, potential employment consequences of what's going on. Um, 
medical ones too, maybe grandparents who are at risk. Um, being involved in professional sport for quite some time, obviously the scoreboard dictates a lot of uh, how you get judged. Um, as with everyone in that industry, you would have gone through tough times when you weren't playing well or you know, on the outer, etc. cetera. Um, two parts to this question. One, do you remember a particular period of your professional career where things weren't going so well for you, you know, particularly mentally? And two, uh, what have you learned about how to handle those times that would help or potentially help our boys to face the hurdles that they're um, dealing with at the moment? Yeah, I guess uh, during the professional career, I obviously got a chance um, to play my first few seasons and, and went really well with Northern Districts and then uh, got to play New Zealand A as a 21-year-old or whatever. Um, and then coming back to that next season, I probably, the next two years, I didn't have as much, as good a years as I probably would have liked. And I look back now and I probably put too much pressure on myself because I was trying too hard to get to that next level in many ways. Um, so, yeah, I, if, I, if I could have spoken to my own, my younger self, I would have said, you know, keep enjoying the game, keep remembering why you love playing the game as a little kid. Um, I think at times we try and put too much pressure on ourselves to score these runs or do this to try and a, make another team or, or you know, whatever, as opposed to just worrying about trying to win games of cricket for whatever team you're playing for at that time, and then the rest of that stuff will take care of itself. Um, that's something that I, I had to learn the hard way and, and I'm quite grateful now that I was able to learn that to help me when I get in situations in the future remember that it's, okay, it's about winning whatever I can do to win this game don't worry about what my own personal goals are because that, all that stuff will get looked after in the end yeah okay thanks for that Daryl now on a lighter note we've asked um, all our guests these couple of questions um, with some yeah. different responses so there's this, I don't know if it's a cult, it's almost a cult in Perth about Birkenstocks, yeah. um, which, yep, yeah, I mean, Birkenstock. they, it's a bit of a craze over here. I, I think it's a bit ridiculous and, and it's from biblical times. But what are your, do you wear them and do you think they're acceptable or, and do you judge people for wearing them? Yeah, so I, I saw them a couple of years ago. I thought they look absolutely ridiculous. And then... Uh, one of the boys is wearing them and he's got the same size. i got size 14 feet, so it's quite tough to find shoes. And I tried them on, I thought, like, he's actually not that bad. So I, I must admit, I do actually own a pair now and I quite like them. So, um, yeah, I've, I've succumbed to the trend. No, I fair enough, fair enough. And last question before we let you go, mate. So the meat pie question. So you know, I'm not sure if it was pro- probably still the case when you were here that Tuesday, and I don't think you're a boarder, but Tuesday's pie day. So all the boarders and all the staff get pies um, yeah. and, and, and what the boarders do to the pies raises some eyebrows um, particularly amongst the staff that some try and lift the roof off the pie and put the sauce in the middle um, some use a, f- a knife uh, fork to just scoop out the mints and leave the pastry there's some really strange stuff happening with the pies how does Daryl Mitchell eat the pie and how does the sauce go with the pie yeah well uh, at Hale I remember it happening because I was mates with a few good boarders and I used to sneak out a pie every now and then for me at lunchtime. So I was quite <laughs> grateful for that. But I'd try and smash it as quickly as possible so I didn't get caught. Yeah. But uh, if I had time, I'd get the roof off the pie and, yeah, really just take my time and really enjoy it. So. Well, that's... Yeah, and a plus that cools it, cools it down too, so it's not as hot. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, every question until then, I'm like, what a great role model and mentor for our kids. Um, and then as, <laughs> as you've kind of undone most of it in your last 30 seconds. But that's all right, mate. Each to their own. Um, but no, seriously, no, Daryl, really appreciate it on the house of four of us. Um, we're going to send this to a lot of our kids that are going to be at home for who knows how long. Um, and uh, I think your journey is a really inspirational one from, from hail to professional sport, the top of your sport, and you're a test cricketer. So congratulations on all of that. I, I hope you can get back out there doing what you love. And we can all do what we love as soon as we can on the sporting fields. And uh, just best wishes to you and your family over this time. No, thank you. I just also want to say congrats to the Darlow Cup as well. Um, I know how hard it is to win that comp. I never, I never got the chance to lift the trophy, so that's an amazing achievement and uh, well done. Yeah. No worries. All good. All right. Thanks, Daryl. Pre- really appreciate it, mate. Thanks a lot, mate. No, no worries. Great, thank you. Thank you. Bye.